All right, welcome back to Terra Invicta, everyone, where I'm going to talk about the next stage of my plan. We've just unlocked Maskarovka, which means I can afford to push the MC limit up to about... I'm going to aim for sort of the 140 and eventually 150 point in the hope that that won't piss the aliens off anymore, but that'll really be pushing it. In the near term, I'm going to have to do two things. I'm going to have to solve my money problem, which I'm going to do with a nano factory... Um, production center, and I'm going to have to solve my mission control problem. This is preferably by getting more ground-based MC, because the more ground-based MC I have, the more I can convert space facilities to doing other useful things like research. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to found a settlement at the Prokofiev Crater, uh, and this base is going to be for nanofactories for the purpose of producing money. So we're going to put down our solar arrays, we'll need two. We're going to put down a bunch of nano factories. We're going to put down probably a basic mining complex to start, just to save that one MC point. Although we can always upgrade it after the fact. Uh, how much does it cost to build? How long does it take to build the second one, rather? 120 days. And the production difference is what? 50% extra yield. I'm just going to build the basic one to start with. And we're going to throw a farm on this just to save a little bit in the meantime. It's a reasonable efficiency in terms of savings. This will help solve our money problem, although it's going to eat into our metals. But I've launched a bunch of asteroid bases to temporarily solve that problem. And I say temporarily because the next stage of my plan is basically this. If we try and build fleets to defend Mercury, Mars, Earth, etc., it's going to take up a lot of MC. Instead, what I'm considering doing... Um, and which I've been, what I've been mulling for a while is consolidating my space and surface assets into facilities that can defend themselves. To that end, I'm thinking about going um, to the level three settlement types, ring habs and colony habs. This will allow us to concentrate more facilities into one location. And that makes it more efficient to use base defense modules. So if you have a level one station and you put a base defense module on it, one, it can only be a level one defense module, and two, it's taking up a quarter of your spots. If you have a maximum level hab, well, then it's not taking up many of your spots at all, and you can use more powerful defenses. So once we get that, and once we have the relevant supporting technologies, what I might do is either abandon or sell off sites that I don't need, or I might allow them to operate while I harden up specific base defense, um, like key location. So I might put all of my MC uh, generation in a level 3 hab or two or three level 3 habs that are defensible, same with interface orbit, so that those sites can defend themselves without the need for a fleet to defend them. That'll allow us to run a space economy without having to worry about defense as much, because defenses can usually deal with a lot of fleets once you put um, good technology on them, and we can focus our fleets on going on the offense or defending extremely critical targets, uh, or working alongside base defenses, meaning we don't need as many ships. Then that allows us to run an economy for a while until the point where we decide that we don't care about pissing off the aliens anymore, we're ready to go to war. And at that point, I intend to very rapidly build a whole bunch of MC capacity, probably around Mercury. Um, rapidly build a bunch of ships, ramp up very, very quickly, and then basically tell the aliens, uh, come at me, bro. So that's the basic plan. To do that, I need to go and get some more MC on planet Earth, which means it's time to, yes, piss off the Academy. I'll, I'll try and bribe them back to friendship pretty quickly. But we're going to win over the hearts and minds of the German people, because Germany has a lot of money, a lot of research, and importantly, it has 12 ground-based mission control, and I kind of want it. We can absorb Germany into the Eurasian Union. We have a claim on its capital, so we will be able to take the country. Uh, courtesy of the very advanced American and the less advanced but still capable Russian armies that we have nearby. Seems legit. Um, so what we'll do is we'll build up popularity, we'll build up unrest. That'll eventually get us to the point where we can launch a coup, and we will repeat our usual tactics. I've built up a little bit of control point limit here. I'm about to finish management research. That'll give me five extra points. I may even at the critical juncture temporarily abandon Israel and try and win it back later, just to soften the blow and prevent people using that opportunity to, for example, break into the UK or the Eurasian Union, things we care more about and which are harder to take back than countries like Israel. Uh, obviously, we want it because this is 
what, 14 control points for 8 MC. That's a fantastic deal. The other thing I've done is I've temporarily slowed India's economic growth because it was growing so quickly that it was eating up on my CP cap with the rapid expansion of its investment points. So it's back to knowledge in India for the moment and a little bit of welfare. We'll go back to India and um, ramp the economy later anyway, but for the moment, it's all science. I'm also considering doing a couple of points of MC in India. It would really crank them out and help us free up our space capacity. But that's really the UK's job. Once the UK finishes this Navy, in fact, I may even take the edge off uh, the nice to have investments, turn them down a little bit in order to put even more money into building up the Royal Navy. I mean, that's the real priority, right? Uh, it doesn't even really need much. Uh, let's put a pip there, turn that off. There we are, 13, 13, 8, 65% of the British budget now going into the Royal Navy. That, that seems about right by historical standards. I have compromised the servants, so I'm going to keep an eye on them, make sure they don't research alienation. And other than that, I'll jump back when it's time to reunite Germany with, uh, with some old friends out east. I mean, really what this is about is Germany, we're going to, rejo we're going to reunify you with Königsberg. Königsberg is going to be part of the same state as Germany again. It's going to be fantastic. Vote for unification. Of course, that doesn't mean, no matter what grand plans I have, that I do not have time to blow this up. And I might, in fact, sabotage this when I have a chance to. Um, I see no reason to let the servants have their nice things. Uh, they don't seem to work for our interests, so I'm going to stop them. Management research should finish again by the end of March which means we should be able to handle the absorption of Germany relatively cleanly without threatening our other points. This is expensive, um, but it does give me a little more flexibility when doing unifications in the future. If I sit constantly below cap, um, I am always have the ability to temporarily take over other countries, uh, develop them, and then swallow them up into the larger federations without worrying about things. I'm also very annoyed at Exodus. They finished Extended Space Survival. They had the most research, and they've doubled up by researching visible combat lasers. I was already researching arc lasers, which is a different uh, branch of the laser tech tree. So humanity's basically going to waste 25,000 research getting a second entire tree of lasers. This is not entirely useless, but uh, it, it's definitely suboptimal. Great Nations is coming along soon, Ferrocite Resistance, Exotic Materials, and this slot will go back to Alien Computers as soon as management research is done. Okay, so the vast majority of Germans who had been thinking that cooperation with the aliens as equals was possible, basically signing up the Academy, well, a majority of Germans now believe that what we really need is to militarise the planet and stamp out alien life. Good to have you on board, Germany. So I'm going to be asking the common people uh, of Deutschland, or specifically, I'm, I'm probably realistically, I'm asking the Bundeswehr to throw out the government of appeasers and allow for a government of reunification and defense of humanity. Let's just remember, this is a video game, right? Please, please, no one take me out of context. Uh, yeah, let's, let's, let's unify Germany with the Eurasian Union. Okay, so Germany has received a last-minute uh, reprieve from voting procedures because I realised I was about to make a terrible mistake, which I am working on fixing now. The Eurasian Union only has a claim on one region of Germany, not the other. So if we invade, my understanding is I will end up with East Germany in the Eurasian Federation and West Germany becoming another member of my national collection, thus putting me way over my CP limit. So the only solution to this is to get the Eurasian Union or someone else claims on all of Germany. Luckily, we just finished Great Nations, so some interesting technologies to allow that should be popping soon. Um, so what are we going to do in the meantime? I think we're going to pick up Space Commerce, and that's because we want to work towards those level 3 HABs. Very, very exciting. We're also about to finish Exotic Materials. That should also be pretty good. In fact, I'm happy with this entire lineup at the moment. I'm a bit annoyed about the whole visible combat lasers thing, but, you know, I'll have to get over it. Thank you, Project Exodus. Order is returning. And I'm stabilizing India. Fantastic. The, will come to our side. the, uh, the US public opinion has swayed away, so I'm going to have to work on that for a little while, but 
the US is almost about to finish a navy for its division and the fusion pile project is available so you can bet that I'll be researching that in just a moment this will bring the US up to seven navally deployable armies eight navally deployable armies is probably a good measure and here we are okay well there it is period Russia forward Russia um, so this gives the Eurasian Federation Eurasian Union rather a huge number of claims Zagreb Belgrade Anchorage Hamburg yes Anchorage Vienna Athens Ulaanbaatar Stockholm Oslo Copenhagen uh, Amsterdam Rome Naples Lyon Paris Madrid Barcelona and Lisbon importantly these claims do mean that annexing the European Union becomes possible for the Eurasian Union and while it would probably be preferable to do the operation the other way around taking the Eurasian Union with Europe that's a considerably longer research path for me whereas it could be quite quick in terms of a smash and grab to go in there and unify it if I'm able to launch a coup itself after all Exodus has managed to run the European Union down a little bit um, basically their primary priority has been mission control and boost this country is producing 8.2 boost and 27 mission control it's gone from starting the game with one army with a navy in France to four armies two of which have navies so Exodus has turned Europe into their mission control center and their military beat stick if we take it away from them at some point it could actually really damage their space presence which is a potential problem for them um, and for me if I want them to be my buddies but it's a very attractive pickup because I could make awfully good use of 27 ground-based mission control but that's a problem for the future in the immediate term forward Russia would allow us to integrate Germany it would allow us to integrate Denmark uh, I think it would, yes it would even allow us to integrate uh, Norway there's no claim on London so we don't get to cross the uh, cross the channel we'd be able to seize servant Mongolia and add that there's a lot of expansion options available now that's a horrifically expensive uh, project from memory but something I should consider for our steadily democratizing Eurasian Union can I cut more economy no I, I can't cut more spending 64 percent knowledge will have to be enough it's just it's slow to increase this but we will get there eventually maybe what they really need is to increase democracy by um, adding more countries where populations are used to high levels of democracy maybe that'll just drive the average democracy level up that's my argument and I'm sticking to it and yes as a reminder I still do this no research for the servants basically all exotic materials fantastic okay so this is a nice little addition this is the study of the exotic materials that the aliens don't produce locally that they bring with them through the wormhole or they have some sort of manufacturing process we're not entirely across what um, mr. Castillo basically explains sorry Colonel Castillo basically explains is that these can be used to enhance basically any system they're intelligent materials they can enhance weapons they can enhance sensors energy generation systems there's no shortage of possibilities every one of the science engineering and construction teams is begging for as many exotics as we can give them and here's the thing we can now collect them and the only way we know to collect them is to get them out of alien ships and vessels so this is an encouragement for you to go mess with the aliens rather than just purely laying low now that we can collect these things maybe we have a reason to risk retaliation by picking some fights with for example say some of the surveillance destroyers that are currently in orbit uh, in any case we're going to pick up fusion pile because it's going to revolutionize our provision of energy in space um, just fantastic really I think fusion pile I think you need to get fusion pile in order to get fusion reactor array otherwise I don't want fusion pile actually I want fusion reactor array because I don't really use the tier 1 generator fusion reactor array there we are and yes it does require fusion pile um, interesting trick by the way right click on technology you want it'll show you the entire tree of text that you need in order to unlock that particular branch so right clicking on fusion reactor array shows me both what I need to research to get to it and what it helps unlock which is fusion reactor farm and heavy fusion reactor farm 
So let's unlock Fusion Pile as a matter of urgency because that is a great way, if we can get Fusion Reactor away, to revolutionize the way we generate power in space. Um, as soon as we finish, I'm going to maximize priority on that, finish it late April so I can switch this to forward uh, Russia because that will give us our next series of expansion options. These American armies aren't ch chilling out in uh, Czechia for nothing. Oh, so close yet so far, guys. Earth is for humans. Sorry. Now there's a unification you don't see all the time. The Academy has unified Korea, uh, bringing the North Korean military into the South Korean one. It has lowered their average tech level and caused a whole bunch of damage overall, but hey, the country is now unified. They've also militarized the heck out of Japan. Japan now has, got, now has what, three armies, navies deployed, doesn't have a nuclear weapons program yet, has 11 mission control, but it looks like between Korea and Japan, they do have a significant amount of military power, which is interesting. Also have Greater India involved. Nice option for expanding India's borders when we have a chance to, but I don't want to spend all of my research on uh, expanding our nations. It's just not the overall priority. And so far, I'm going to stick with forward Russia because um, it just there's potential. The potential value is greater. Like adding Germany and some of these locations to the Eurasian Union is worth more than expanding India. But I definitely do want to expand India. Oh man, the population potential there. Well, we've got a little bit of a show of force going on by the aliens here. Victor 65 is a fleet with a bunch of corvettes, a dreadnought, more corvettes and a frigate for 2k combat power. And there is this thing, a Dark Star class mothership sitting in orbit as well. What a formation. I'm not sure why they're here or what their intention is, but either way, I don't want to engage that with my very, very small fleet. We're nowhere near having the sort of defences that I want in order to take on a monster like that. So, it's welcome to chill in orbit for as long as it wants. Please just ignore the space infrastructure all around you. Jeez, what a ship. So I've launched some of these asteroid bases before. The first one has just started landing now. These are ultimately disposable, but they're going to give very good yields while I've got them for very limited MC involvement. Now, they may also distract the aliens once war breaks out if they have to send fleets all across the asteroid belt in order to deal with annoyances like this. If they don't, things with very eccentric orbits like this can potentially be useful, depending on where they are in their orbit phase cycle and whether or not you set up a shipyard in orbit. This one, for example, has an orbit which takes it well out near some of these outer objects, uh, near this alien base here. It's reasonably proximate to Jupiter at a certain point in its orbital path. So a launch from, say, this point in the orbital path, if it was aligning with Jupiter properly, uh, there might be some good orbital transfer windows, depending on the phasing of the orbit that is necessary. So these objects are not necessarily bad to have. I have no intention of defending them, at least initially, but for the moment, they should be just fine. And as you can see, I've started seeding the asteroid belt with these very low investment distractions. I will need more MC in order to fuel this though, and I'm not going to be ready to go into Germany until December. So I might need to rekey a station around Mercury in order to get some temporary MC going. Okay, so here's a nifty little uh, invention that will disrupt our economy in the short term, but is actually very, very promising in the longer term. We've unlocked fusion reactor arrays. When you compare these to fission reactor arrays, they've got about twice the output in exchange for maybe less than twice the money upkeep, uh, about the same water upkeep, a very, very slightly increased uh, volatiles upkeep, and a much reduced uh, fissiles upkeep because they're using whatever form of fusion we have. I think at this point we're probably in the DT stage. Um, but also what this means is we can get a lot more slot efficiency on planets like Mars where we're actually using these arrays at the expense of temporary. Now we have two choices. We can overhaul the bases all at once, um, which will shut the base down, but the upgrade will happen sooner. Or we can go through doing partial over um, overhauls so the base is never entirely shut down um, and then replace the replaced power modules as we go. I think that's the approach I'm probably going to go with in order to keep this mine income flowing uh, full time. 
It's only going to be really useful at these Tech 2 bases. I could also get um, slightly more production out of the T1 bases by replacing individual fission piles, but there's no way to do that without some really keen juggling. I think the better approach is to make these places Tier 2 as soon as possible. So I'm just going to overhaul the Level 2 bases. There aren't that many of them. I think there are two on Mars. There's a number in orbit that might rely on this stuff, and there's one on Ceres. Uh, so this is the other one I need to overhaul. This one has no spare power generation, though. So what I'm going to do is go one fusion reactor there, and it's going to temporarily depower some skunk works. I can live with that, and I'm going to steadily run this overhaul over time while keeping the mines operable. Um, and then we'll go to Ceres, which will have a similar sort of problem... Uh, is it Inner System Asteroid? No, that's the Heidelberg. We want Middle Asteroid Belt. There we are for Ceres. Most of these are small bases. These are all in construction, so I'm very, very glad that I have more mission control on the way. I might have to build some more on Earth in a hurry, however. This has got seven spare power, so again, we're going to do a temporary shutdown. This is going to temporarily shut down two Xenoscience modules. Not the worst thing in the world. Just going to have to remember to keep coming back to do this rolling upgrade. But this means we're going to have a lot more spare slots in these bases to optimize things uh, while we wait. I could also use it to get more interface slots out of Earth orbital stations by swapping out solar arrays for fusion arrays. I'm not sure I want to commit to that cost yet. I might when I want to save slots and potentially put defenses on. But I'm pinning a lot of my hopes on Tier 3 station developments for my critical infrastructure. Anyway... Fusion reactors have officially arrived. A very exciting time for humanity. 2032. I'd say that's impressive. All right, well, sometimes random events come for you, and it seems like that's exactly what's happened now. For more than a year, I've been keeping the servants from researching alienation. Um, I was on track to do it again. They were lots and lots and lots of points short of their goal, and then suddenly it just completed, which means they've hit a major, uh, sudden, random research point generation event, and as a result, their tech has instantly completed. It's bad luck, but it means that whether we like it or not, the mid-game is going to be coming for us relatively soon, or at least that is my suspicion. So this lazy build-up that we've been pursuing has to speed up just a little bit. After all, the Alien Administration is no joke, and it makes managing hate a lot more difficult, so here is the basic plan. We're going to need to accelerate our process of getting a greater space presence both in place, and then fortified, and then setting ourselves up for what I hope to be a sudden expansion, where I suddenly don't count about hate, uh, care about hate anymore. People have noticed me floating a whole bunch of resources, cash, uh, various space resources, and that's because the plan, essentially, is to get to the point where I build up a series of major orbital and surface installations that are broadly capable of defending themselves from most alien attacks, and then at the right juncture, building up a whole bunch of excess mission control points and shipyards so that suddenly, when I don't care about MC anymore, I can uh, queue up a whole bunch of t uh, ships at an appropriate tech level, suddenly complete them and go on the offensive immediately rather than having to deal with triggering alien hatred and then dealing with retribution while I'm still building the fleet. Ideally that would have meant next generation reactors, my goal next generation weapons and next generation armor all being completed in time. Now we're probably going to have to do some fighting on Earth and some management on Earth to buy the time necessary for that plan still to work. The first thing I'm going to need is a whole bunch more mission control. I'm building some in space, obviously, but ground-based mission control is important. Period Rossiya will, will enable the Eurasian Union to potentially, for example, grab the 6 mission control in Denmark, the 13 mission control um, in Germany. Uh, there's additional mission control in Italy, which again belongs to the initiative. And uh, I think Greece, yeah, Greece has 6 points, again belonging to the Academy. So we then have to ask ourselves the question about diplomacy. Um, I try not to be at war with every faction at once. I think you want some friends, and you want your friends to be doing well. So here's my broad thinking. Exodus and the Resistance should remain in our friendship column. Um, Exodus, in fact, I think already has a larger fleet than I do. They're much less technologically advanced, but I think they have something like eight or nine warships in orbit at the moment around Earth, and more than 100 spent mission control. They're catching up to me relatively quickly, and I'm happy with that. The Resistance is a little more behind, 
but my plan right now is to sell them a bunch of the infrastructure that I don't need in space to free up mission control. I'm not using my level 1 stations in orbit, and I'm not going to have the MC to upgrade them to level 2, because I want to use the MC I gain uh, through these technologies that I'm building now to upgrade T2 stations to Tech 3, because those are easier to defend, and also to create an MC cap space for me to build a fleet when the time comes. So I think the resistance gets my spare infrastructure. Then the question is what happens to the teams in the middle, the initiative and the academy, seeing as the servants and the protectorate are my avowed enemies. I'm humanity first. I think that I can take Germany off the academy as long as I time it properly and bribe them at the same time. If I look at my current diplomatic relations, I am in conflict, which is um, something that scares people, but in conflict doesn't really mean you're in a shooting war. They're not really going to come at you. It just means that if you leave them an obvious opening that they sh really should seize, they'll come for it. So we're in conflict with the Resistance, the Academy, and Project Exodus. My goal would be to keep it that way, I think. But I'm just at war with the Initiative. So my thinking is that I can start seizing Initiative space assets. I can seize um, Italy. I can seize Denmark. Um, Yes, pissing off the initiative, but gaining a lot more mission control, expanding my hold in Europe. Um, I can probably pay off the academy in order to maintain some diplomatic stability there. It'll be more difficult if I decide I also want Greece, but I don't think I will mess with Turkey um, or the European Union because I want to keep Exodus on side and I want to keep Exodus expanding. Taking away all their ground-based mission control would completely stymie their expansion. Then I have to turn my attention to the servants, and I have to turn my attention to a lesser degree to the protectorate. I think the protectorate just got downgraded as a threat. In fact, them holding China is probably a good thing. They will probably resist the alien administration in a way that the servants wouldn't. So potentially unlocking Greater India and throwing the servants out of Pakistan and Bangladesh is possibly a good idea. The fewer places the servants have, the better, because those are fewer places that I need to surveil to watch for alien facilities. Whew. So I held them off for a year and a half by sabotaging their research. I bought myself some valuable time, but eventually they're going to get here. I think I have enough time to clean up some positions in Europe. I have switched um, Britain back towards building a navy in the hopes that they will quite quickly uh, get to like I want to get this to like 99 points out of 100 so that I can build that navy in emergency without paying the upkeep in peacetime. And then I'll just build mission control in the UK. I also wanted to check. Unfortunately, the UK doesn't have a claim on Ireland. That, that, that makes sense, but uh, it would be nice to be able to throw the servants out of Ireland as well. But anyway, that is the development. I'm searching right now. I'm surveilling a whole bunch of unknown counselors, trying to find people from the Resistance or Exodus or the Academy so that I can sell them stuff that I plan to take from the initiative. But there's the plan. Sorry for the sudden interruption, but a random event uh, to find this game early on, and another random event seems to have put us back on track for some serious mid-game challenges. And the 2030s are indeed meant to be years of mid-game challenge. Hope you're all looking forward to it. Although, as we push up our tech tree, we've just got arc lasers, and I'm now going for deuterium tritium fusion. This will increase the global fusion level by one, protecting us from the, well, partially protecting us from the terrible, terrible, terrible energy crisis event. It'll also mean the economy priority produces less uh, carbon dioxide and is more efficient. That's nice. It also unlocks a whole bunch of uh, reactor tech if we have the right inputs, and we don't have those yet. But this is, this is a good technology. Um, decreasing global warming is important to protect the global economy in the long term. I've already done a lot to save it by cutting off spoils everywhere, but these benefits are really secondary to unlocking the reactors, so let's do deuterium tritium fusion. We'll also need uh, molecular assemblers and a whole bunch of stuff to go into our planned level 3 weapons technology, but this is us pushing towards our reactor. Uh, space future is us pushing towards our level 3 orbitals. As soon as we get forward Russia, I might switch more research point priority towards the global technologies. Alright, I said we were going to move quickly, and we are moving quickly. Uh, we've staged our coup d'etat in Germany. We have research point defense arc laser turrets. That's good. That improves our point defenses. We finish rapid response teams. A lot is happening at the same time. I'll do the technology in the moment. So we're now over CP cap, but we need to move quickly. Uh, if we take the last CP in Germany, which should be fine because we have these three, so no one else can claim for this one. So we'll defend interests, we'll take executive, we'll unfriend everyone else, 
uh, and then move in with the seven combined US Eurasian armies that are preparing to launch their attack from Warsaw to Berlin. This time the tanks won't roll from Berlin to Warsaw, but vice versa. Uh, that should bring in the 13 points of German mission control, and then we can talk about moving on to Denmark and potentially Italy. With our navies available on this force, I think all armies here except for one have navies, uh, it should be quick work. We can always ally the UK in, uh, in fact, which I should do, I should ally the UK to Eurasia. Done. Which will make the British armies available for that purpose. I can do the same with India. India should be allied with all of my nations. Done. Fantastic. Uh, so that will start solving our mission control problem. You can already see we've solved it by bringing Germany in, so I can start the next wave of construction, although I want to hold some in reserve. Uh, but maybe one more MC station and one more nanofab, and then everything else from there is probably upgrades, 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 plus selling some stations we don't need anymore. The other thing is we have ID'd an alien base in Kuwait. Uh, it will piss off, this is almost immediately following the research of alienation by the servants. It'll cause retaliation, but my plan is to attack this base probably with Max, and also to pare down the Xenoflora in servant territory because they won't do anything about it. It's clear that at some point in the future, an operation in the Middle East may be necessary just to clear this area out um, of any bases that they may be building, but I'm basically willing to accept the retaliation. There are ships in orbit, they'll destroy stuff, I'll, I'll deal with it. I'm not ready to defend myself just yet. Um, when I am, I'll start throwing layered defense arrays on my stations or upgrade into Tech 3. Layered defense is a holdover until I can get to Tier 3 and start putting battle stations on things then we'll really have a chance of defending our infrastructure, but for now, this base has got to go. So the Academy will clearly be pissed, so what we need is some generous trades. Um, I'm going to give them some technology, because I actually think speeding them up might be useful, uh, and they are probably not going to sell it to the Protectorate and the Servants, given their diplomatic relations, so we will sell them this generous trade I accept. Hopefully that buys us a little bit more opinion. If I do this enough times, we should get out of war state and back to uh, in conflict. There are They're going to require larger gifts to say generous when they hate you right after an event. If I was willing to wait a couple of months, um, I would get better value for giving them generous trades. I don't right now, but I'd rather just make sure that they don't regard me as in a war state. I want to be at war with three human factions, Initiative, Servants, Protectorate, and only because beating up the Initiative is convenient. Uh, I do not want to be at war with Academy, Protectorate, uh, no, <laughs> Academy, Resistance, or Exodus at this point. I do think the Academy are dumb in, and naive from a Humanity First perspective, but there's no reason to get into a conflict when the aliens are on their way. So there we are, complete trade. And the alien base is clear or rather it's been successfully assaulted and cleared. The fact we've, we've got no additional information support. suggests to me uh, that there had been no abductions in the region. So clearing it has given us a supply of exotics. This is an alternative to shooting down ships. We're going to need these things later. So yes, I'm about to get some of my stuff shot down, but I'm willing to live with it because I've denied the aliens part of their infrastructure. I've denied them a location they can found the alien nation without the help of, shall we say, outside intervention, which is one of the things alien bases can do. Um, and whatever price I pay, I think is going to be worth it. Fingers crossed. And while I'm tempted to continue with the story technology, right now there's a whole bunch of other things I need. Components for my upcoming uh, stations and warships, so I'm picking up some of the uh, IR arc laser batteries, even though I want to go to phases. There's a whole bunch of stuff in here that I want. Civilian uh, computing, that's good, but not worth 25,000. United uh, Executive Privilege might be good. Let's get Crackdown Protection for us. That'll finish in 2033. And I'm also considering bumping the priority on our space future to two stars. That makes a massive difference. I might even go three. Then we are April 2033 for our space future. March 2033, oh, I don't like that. Everyone's researching this, so I'm going to give this a bit of a bump. Move that to September 23rd. Uh, no, this is the economy choice. This can wait, because this relies on a whole bunch of other technologies, molecular assemblers and things like that. Greater India is a nice to have. But picking it up in April is probably a good idea. So I'm going to go with this tech balance for the moment. 
As a side note, you'll remember we had gone negative on financial income. At this stage, uh, another nanofab, and I've got one more of these in construction, has started, has finished rather, on mercury. This has put our money back positive. It eats um, noble metals and basic metals and a bunch of other upkeeps, but it is stabilizing our cash situation. I'd like to keep cash positive. It's likely to go negative again in the future, but for the moment, building up a little bit of a war chest for future direct investments during emergencies, like an alien invasion on the terrestrial surface of Earth, something I'd like to keep in place. So this is a basic nano factory station. It's our income center for the moment. Um, I prefer it to funding for the moment, but in future, we're probably gonna transition away from these things towards more interesting things once we get to tech level three. And with that, the friendly neighborhood United States Army with its nice little railgun tanks has completed its uh, vote supervising mission in Berlin, joining Germany into the Eurasian Union. Fantastic. Max is meanwhile uh, having a chat with the people of Denmark to see whether or not they would be willing to undergo a similar referendum. This has brought us back underneath our control point cap and boosted the Eurasian Union in a big way. Um, it's a bit of a shock to the system and it means that cohesion values natural rest state is trending towards zero and that's just because uh, people who are used to a higher level of democracy are now being pushed into a state with a lower level one. So you can bet that we are going to double down in fact, even at the expense of the economy shrinking, double down on the push of this number higher and higher and higher. Um, it might take a decade to get a full democracy in place, but we will get there. And in the meantime, it's doing its job of providing mission control input to our humanity first cause. Welfare spending, um, it should be enough to handle inequality. I might have to increase it given the sheer number of resource nodes in this country, all of which make inequality harder to manage. Um, but it is what it is. In any case, this is a huge victory for humanity first. If we can double up uh, with Denmark, potentially Italy and Greece, then the mission control provided by this uh, agglomeration should be significant and we can repurpose some of our mission control stations for the cause. I've also identified another alien base in Mongolia. Again, uh, I've lost a ship to retaliation. I forgot to film it. Um, I'm probably gonna lose more, but I am gonna go after this alien structure as well. I don't like to let them exist. So I always monitor alien activity where I can. And whenever I identify bases, there's another one in Africa. You can bet that I'm going after that too, no matter the cost. Just don't want to allow them the infrastructure, especially if it allows them to found alien administration in somewhere like Chad, that's hard to get to. I, I just don't want it. So I'm going to go after both of them in the next phase. Max hits a base and the aliens set an intercept mission for one of our low earth orbit stations. This is just the cost of doing business, but as you can see, I'm acquiring exotics and I'm trying to pare back the aliens uh, position on earth. And so far I'm doing it relatively successfully. That said, it's only November 2032. We'll see how we go. And this might be a good place to end the episode. The United States has just created a new division, the 10th Mountain, which is going to be getting a navy, bringing the United States up to a very nice eight armies that I hope to now have navies. Their tech standard is default 5.5. They're getting plus 0.6 when they're, well, they're getting plus 0.3 default, but we can maybe get them another plus 0.25 from advice. So soon, I hope to push these armies to an effective 6.0 tech level. The United Kingdom did finish its navy when I wasn't looking. That's a little bit suboptimal, but the UK now has three military forces capable of deployment overseas, um, of which I might send one to help an American force, which is landing in Vladivostok and making their way towards Mongolia, because Mongolia, thanks to uh, forward Russia, is now subject to a claim by the Eurasian Union, and it would be good to throw the servants out of here, uh, if nothing else, because they could annoyingly put bases or xenoflora there, and it would be kind of nice to throw them out. Uh, if not for the resistance, a similar thing would happen in Uzbekistan, because that has five mission control. Uh, while we were over CP cap, the resistance took one of the two Israel points. I'm not going to start a war with them by contesting it. Voting in Denmark is over, and they have universally decided to join the Eurasian Union, which is fantastic. So they're all high-fiving the American soldiers and the Eurasian troops that are in that area. Uh, I think the next stop is going to be Italy, but that will require some more work in terms of raising unrest and generating popularity. Then Max should be able to do the things that he does in order to get us another 12 mission control and take it off the initiative. Greece is probably our final spot eventually, but I've just got, I've already negotiated back to in conflict with the Academy. I don't want to go straight back to at war. Uh, so this in conflict matters to me a lot. In conflict, in conflict, in conflict. Yep, we are doing okay. Um, 
Fantastic. Servants are now researching the one true path. I believe this is their mission technology. Once that gets to 5,000, I will bomb it. Um, and I think that's that for the moment. The next episode, we're going to go back to space a little bit. We're going to do the expansions on Earth, uh, which you can probably already predict. Uh, Italy, Greece, Mongolia, maybe a little bit more. Uh, Greater India may or may not finish, but we're realistically, we're going back to space. We're going to find a resistance counselor. We're going to start seizing initiative stations and handing them over. We're going to feed, unfortunately, some of our stations and ships to the aliens in order to appease them. But hey, we got 10.7 exotics now, and they're not where I don't want them to be, which is on planet Earth. We're going to have to keep an eye on servant uh, locations, servant countries, scan them occasionally, or throw the servants out periodically in order to make sure they're not building anything there which is kind of annoying. But as overall, it's January 2033, and we're in an okay spot. Our MC is below the level that we can safely maintain, thanks to our Muscatorfka technology. Um, although it is, it's it's pushing it a bit. 133 is pushing it somewhat. Um, I'd want to be able to reduce this a little bit by selling off some excess stations and whatnot, uh, and then giving myself a little bit of cap to start upgrading to level threes when they come along. I have a lot of spare mission control, thanks to the countries that I'm absorbing, I will soon have more, which means I can recycle some of my mission control stations around Mercury into more research stations, which is what I would prefer to have. So expect to see that next episode as well, as we gear up for the next stage of the plan, the Tier 3 orbital facilities, uh, and the integration of fusion technologies and next generation weapons into some potentially exciting first defense platforms, and then eventually some warships that are going to give the aliens pause. See you soon.